Hello everybody, my name is Luke Moore and this is Hot Mode. and today on Hot Mode we are going to be talking about how much of a mess the CFDA awards for 2018 were. If you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. So you can go down below, hit the subscribe button, and turn on my post notifications. Like, what do you have to lose? If you guys like these kinds of videos where I dissect all of the things that go on in fashion, definitely give this video a like, and if you want to see any of the pieces that I'm wearing in any of my videos, definitely go down to my description box and you'll find them there. And if you guys want to see some poppin' fashion meme content and see me be a literal savage on my Instagram story, like, definitely check me on Instagram, at Hot so I know I said I was gonna talk about Alexander Wang's show today, but that show was whack. He's so unimpressive and he really thinks he's the fucking one. Let me just say, Alexander Wang, here's my review of your collection. You're not shit. Thank you. But I think the CFDA awards are so much more important and I think Alexander Wang kind of cycles into the CFDA awards in that the CFDA awards are a fucking disaster. And essentially it's all about making people in the industry feel better about themselves. And I don't mean the young, small, cool brands who are struggling to really make it happen. I'm talking about the executives and the big names in fashion. It's bullshit, it's fodder, it's just a way for people in fashion to make themselves feel better. The CFDA stands for the Council of Fashion Designers of America, and essentially for a long time it was this really relevant thing that sort of dictated how New York fashion worked, kind of. The president of the CFDA is Diane von Furstenberg, and she's more of the face of the company, while Stephen Kolb is the CEO and does more of like the day-to-day -day operations. These awards are like meant to mirror like the Oscars or whatever. It's meant to be like the big fashion thing of the industry. But like, honestly, it's fucking boring. Honestly, nobody gives a shit about it. And honestly, you wouldn't get the people that went to it, A, unless you paid them, and B, unless you were giving them an award. Just saying. Now you're probably gonna say, Luke, why do you hate the CFDA? Like, why do you seem so bitter? Well, A, I'm always bitter, so chill. And B, New York fashion right now is like a disaster. Like, literally all of the best brands have left. Proenza Schooler, Rodarte, Tom Brown, Joseph Altazara are just a few. They've gone off to Paris, they're doing their thing. The bigger brands like Raph Simmons and Calvin Klein and The Row, don't really do all that much to, you know, make names or press for themselves. It's not really that big of a deal for them. And the CFDA really kind of shits on all of the smaller brands that are essentially keeping New York together. And honestly, Vogue and Anna Wintour can't even really save the industry. Vogue has turned into like a celebrity fucking magazine. It's like people. And the rumors of Anna Wintour leaving Vogue honestly are hurting her street cred. So. Nothing right now in the industry, whether it's Vogue or the CFDA, can really change what's happening in the New York fashion industry. And to me, those two things, if they can't change it, I don't know who can. But it's strange to me that while the industry is going through so much fucking turmoil, the people that run the companies and have their faces and names on companies are like, yeah, let's just give each other rewards because like, it's gonna make everybody feel better. Like, no, I don't think that that's how that works. So let's think of a new plan. So I'm gonna talk about the nominees in each of the categories, and then we will actually discuss the winners and why I think they should have won or why they shouldn't have won. There aren't many people that I'm like, yeah, they should have won. So the list of nominees for Women's Wear Designer of the Year are Raph Simmons for Calvin Klein, Gabriella Hurst, Marc Jacobs, Virgil Abloh for Off-White, and the Olsen Twins for The Row. Here's my thing. All of these brands have been in these categories for like a long time. Maybe not Gabriella Hurst or Virgil, but The Row I see every year, Marc Jacobs I see every year, and every year since Raph has been at Calvin, I see Raph at Calvin. So to me, in my personal opinion, why are we not putting more of the younger but more established brands in these categories. I mean, I'm not saying that these guys should win, but putting these younger brands in with contemporaries like Raph at Calvin or Marc Jacobs might actually boost the brand's profile and make them like a little bit more profitable. Brands like Adam Selman, Brock Collection, Tory Burch, Eka Slada, who was fucking nominated and a finalist in the LVMH prize. Like there was none of them there. I don't understand. Like why are none of those brands actually being treated as 
big brands. Like, like it makes no sense. I can't understand that. But we like to have the same fucking names in there. One's owned by LVMH. Another one is owned by PVH, which is a gigantic fucking company who has a lot of money. Virgil Abloh is beloved by the industry now and also is working for LVMH. And the Olsen twins, I think, just bring credibility and like press because there's this like cult of Olsen twin lovers. I'm not saying that these people don't deserve it, but I'm saying they're in there every- It gets boring if they're fucking there every single year. Like we know that one of them's gonna win every year, but take two of the names that are there every single year out and like put in some younger names. It might like actually make people more interested. The winner of the Women's Wear Designer of the Year was Raph Simmons. In my personal opinion, I'm sure that Raph thinks it's all fucking bullshit. I mean, if you ever read his Mucha Prada interview for System Magazine, he talks about how he doesn't think there's any fucking criticism in the industry and how that's boring and annoying and how he wants there to be more. And he's kind of scared now to give his opinions on anybody in the industry because everybody makes a big kerfuffle about it. So I don't think Raph is like, yeah, I'm so happy I got this award. I think Raph is like, yeah, like I work for Calvin Klein who has like fucking billions of dollars. So obviously the CFDA and all the people in there want to court Calvin Klein to just give them more money. That's just me, I don't know. But I mean, it seems pretty likely. Now let's talk about menswear. The menswear designer of the year nominees were Raph Simmons for Calvin Klein, Virgil Abloh for Off-White. Do you see a pattern yet? I do. James Jebbia for Supreme. Riddle me fucking that one, please. Tom Brown and Tom Ford. Here's my thing. There are so many better and younger designers in these categories that aren't even being put in these categories. I mean, Raph Simmons' own label is so much better than Raph Simmons' men's for Calvin Klein. Just, just me. I'm pretty positive that Raph Simmons showing in New York is really the only reason that people are still coming to New York Fashion Week men's. Just my thoughts. And overall, Tom Brown doesn't really show in New York anymore. Tom Ford is a fucking disaster. Virgil for Off-White is like fine and I understand that. And Supreme is not a fucking menswear brand. It's a t-shirt company. Let's not be crazy. New York's menswear design is not great. And so I understand that these are really the people that make semi-good menswear stuff. I personally would have liked to see somebody like Heron Preston or Matthew Adams Dolan or Gypsy Sport in there. Like there are so many young brands that actually could really benefit from this that are not being given that chance because I'm sure the CFTA wants its nominees to be the big names. And like, that's again, boring. I'm tired of that. It's not interesting. I don't care. But let's really talk about this Supreme shit. Supreme is a company known for fucking making branded t-shirts, hoodies, and fucking bricks. So please let me know where you've ever seen a menswear design aesthetic anywhere in Supreme. I've been in the store, it's fucking t-shirts and skateboards. And I'm not saying that Supreme isn't great. I think it's a very interesting business model. I think that it has really taken the industry by storm, but let's not get crazy and call it menswear because that's not what it is. It is literally t-shirts that make a lot of money because they're overhyped and undersupplied. I get an appreciation for Supreme, but like if the founder and creator of Supreme, James Jebbia, is literally like, I don't know why I'm here because Supreme is not a fashion brand, I don't really think that we should all be talking about Supreme as a fashion brand. Uh, I've never considered Supreme to be a, a fashion company or myself uh, designer, but um, appreciate the recognition for what we do. Let's move on to accessory designer of the year. The nominees were Paul Andrew, Stuart Vevers for Coach, Rachel Monsieur and Florian Gabrielle for Monster Gabrielle, Irene Newworth, and Ashley Olsen and Mary Kate Olsen for The Row. Paul Andrew, I think, really makes sense. He has really made a name for himself. Stuart Vevers for Coach, also Coach has reinvented its bag, semi sort of. Monsieur Gabrielle is a really relevant brand that has kind of built itself up with, from my opinion, not all that much big fashion press. Irene Newworth, who I really don't know, so I can't really talk on her. And the Olsen twins for The Row, The Row won. The Row, I've never ever met somebody that said, oh, The Row bag, oh, The Row shoes, oh, The Row jewelry, it's so amazing amazing and needed, it's just what I needed in my life. Like that's not a conversation that happens. Nobody knows about the Rose fucking accessories. I think it's just pandering to the cult that is the Olsen twins fans. Emerging talent got me fucking 
wild. Like, I literally think this is the most ridiculous group of nominees ever. Mike Amiri for Amiri. I don't think I've ever seen it besides Vogue Runway, and let me just say that it did not look terribly interesting. Laura Vassar-Brock and Christopher Brock for the Brock Collection. Riddle me this one. How did the Brock Collection, which won the Vogue CFDA Fashion Fund in 2016, become a emerging talent? They won a fucking competition two years ago where they got like 100 to 300,000 fucking dollars. So please let me know how they're an emerging talent. They should be in there with women's wear if you think they're so fucking good at a winter. Kirby Jean Raymond for Pierre Moss. That's a joke. Aurora James for Brother Veli's. I don't even know what that fucking is. And Sandra Lack for Cies Marion. I'm happy that Sandra Lack won for Cies Marion because if that did not happen, I would have just deleted my YouTube channel. Like it would have been over. I just would have said, you know what? I'm going into finance. Like that's it. That's the end. Like I'm done. I'm happy for Sander Lack, I really like him. He was far above the fucking rest and actually was an emerging talent. So I'm happy that somebody actually decided that they were gonna follow the fucking title of the award. And all of the following awards were actually named prior to the awards actually happening. So we knew that all of these people were gonna get all of these awards. The Swarovski Award for Positive Change went to Diane von Furstenberg. And I do understand that because Diane is very vocal about her support for women within the industry. I will say, is it a little bit shady that she's the head of the CFTA and that she's winning an award? Kind of, like, let me just say, that seems to be kind of strange, in my opinion. The Joffrey Bean Lifetime Award went to Narcisco Rodriguez. It was his first time winning this award. He is very well known within the industry. I actually love his perfume. And he did win Women's Wear Designer of the Year two years in a row, and I believe he's the only person to have ever done that in 2002 and 2003. So I'm very happy for Narcisco Rodriguez. He seems great. The Founders Award in honor of Eleanor Lambert went to Carolina Herrera, who actually stepped down from her brand. Let me just say, I heard it's not all that fun working at Carolina Herrera, just what I've heard. But you know what, congrats, great, like, cool, don't care. Next up was Naomi Campbell who won the Fashion Icon Award. And actually I was really happy that Naomi won this. I think the first person that was ever given the award was Rihanna. And I think it was really to start and make Rihanna seem to be this like big fashion icon thing. Beyonce also was awarded with it. Like there were a lot of celebrities awarded with it. So I was happy to see that Naomi, who actually grew up and became famous because of the industry, was awarded the award. I think it was probably a very hard year for Naomi, especially with losing Azadine Alaya, who was like her surrogate father. I think this is like a good little pick me up for her. But in her own right, she's iconic. I mean, she was one of the supermodel six. She broke so many barriers, both in terms of gender and in terms of race in the industry while she was still walking. Her walk is literally iconic. She has been pushing for diversity within the industry for literally years. She hosts like these philanthropic fashion shows all the time. And she literally walks for young designers if she finds them to be good enough. So like she is constantly supporting the industry. Not only is she a fashion icon, but she really actually is supportive of the industry and wants it to be better. I'm not saying that that Calvin Klein dress that she wore looked very good because it didn't. But overall, I'm happy that Naomi won the award because I actually think she really deserved it. And I think it was a good stepping stone to make the Fashion Icon Award more about people within the industry rather than those that are outside of it and just use the industry as a way to get what they need. The International Award went to Donatella Versace. Fine, I'll deal with it. While the Media Award went to newly appointed Edward Enenfull for British Vogue, Again, actually really happy for Edward. I think he deserves it. He has been putting out semi-good covers for British Vogue. Some of them are a bit meh, but you know, hopefully he, you know, takes a little bit more time to make it work, but we'll see. Finally, the newest award was the Influencer Award, which was given to Kim Kardashian. I think ever since KKW as a brand kind of popped off, the industry is cozied up to Kim Kardashian a lot more. I will say, I think she looked pretty good in Rick Owens. It was giving me like some Michelle LeMay vibes. So you give me Michelle LeMay, I will take it. And I definitely do think that Kim Kardashian is an influencer and is probably one of the most prevalent influencers within the world. 
she really does start a lot of fashion trends and she definitely is very important to the way that trends and influence and social media all work. I will also say though, Kim Kardashian is probably one of the most problematic celebrities and influencers out there. She does not originate the majority of her ideas. I mean, think about the braids that she wears or the fact that her butt is gigantic. She really appropriates a lot of things from African Americans and a lot of African American women do not actually get the credit or the social acceptance they deserve until Kim Kardashian, who is a white woman, makes it popular. So Kim is very problematic. I don't really know how much of the industry really cares about that because the industry is also extremely problematic. A funny thing that I did find was Issa Rae who hosted the night, who I didn't really think was all that funny, but I do think that she made a very good point where she said that she was the first person of color and the first woman person of color to actually host these awards. If that does not say something, I don't know what does. So yeah, I understand Kim getting this influencer award and I understand that the industry wants Kim there because it's gonna make a big deal for Kim and the press is gonna eat it up and it's gonna become more, you know, beloved. But let's be real, Kim is not an amazing human being with all that much moral influencer credibility and I don't want anybody to be like, yeah, she's so great, I love her, like, uh. She is what she is, and it shows that the industry really just wants more press out of it. So yeah, those are my opinions on the CFDA Awards. I really hated it, I thought it was awful, and I hope that it doesn't happen until we fix the industry. But that's probably not gonna happen. So let me know what you guys thought of all of the things that went wrong, Kim winning awards, Supreme winning awards, the lack of actual interesting nominees, I want to see that in the comments below. Let's have discussions. Let's like get it popping. But I will see you guys on the next video on Friday. It is going to be about Andre Leon Talley. So definitely check it out. So I'll see you guys in the next video and TTYL.